Right from the beginning, Stani showed this really close relationship with the chimpanzees. I like them, they like me. <laughs> we began calling Stani the chimp whisperer. The sad part is that chimpanzees might go extinct in our lifetime. This is what we have to fight in Africa if we want to save the chimpanzees. And people like Stani can go into villages and talk about these things. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Breeze, Breezeway Productions' The Breeze. And we are continuing our Holly Shorts 2020 official selection interviews with a film called Pant Hoot. And we have director uh, Richard Reams here. How are you, Richard? I'm good, Alex. How are you? I'm doing good, doing good. Uh, happy to talk to you about this short documentary film, which talks about chimpanzees and, and Jane Goodall. So tell us uh, a little bit about uh, Pant Hoot. Pant Hoot is a um, small documentary about a man that survived the Burundi genocide, which was the genocide that was happening right before the Rwandan genocide. And everybody knows Hotel Rwanda. That movie was about that genocide. It's basically the same civil war, only in a different country, uh, in a neighboring country. And he survived that. Uh, and while he was, while that war was going on, he was rescuing chimpanzees for the Jane Goodall Institute in, um, in his country, in Burundi. Mm -hmm. and, um, and he spent a lot of time with the chimps and learned what their communication uh, is all about. He learned what they're feeling and thinking and saying just by observation and mimicking. And he can actually have a you know, conversation, probably not as complicated as this one for a chimpanzee, but not far, you'd be surprised. I mean, I saw it, you know. Yeah, was he, was he able to successfully have a, uh, a fully understandable conversation with a chimpanzee so that it, he, he was able to interpret through the language of Pant Hoot, which uh, I, I think is fascinating. It's, it's the intro to your film where he's, he's, you start showing, uh, you know, the, the reactions and the sounds and the movements and how the chimpanzees would, would understand it. Could they really have a full conversation with each other? Well, not, not with compl com complex um, concepts. It's more of like, oh, wow, there's some really cool food over here. Come here, everybody, come and have it. Or, you yeah. know, hey, chimps, let's groom each other. I need some special attention. I'm feeling sad or whatever. It's more things like, it's a very emotional thing. And I think that, you know, the other, the other more subtle, um, parts of a conversation are understood by all involved if they understand uh, the body language. And he understood, it's also, it's not just auditory. It's like, you know, okay, you know, you know, this means one thing, this means, you know, okay, yeah, you're the boss, you know, or whatever. And it's, there's the ways of showing respect and, and things like that. And, and there's an understanding. And I guess a lot of that may be, um, uh, you know, just, your group of friends don't really have to say something. You can like all look at each other and know, okay, let's order a pizza or whatever. I'm pretty sure it's like that, but I'm not, you know, it's, we don't know until we. Sure, sure. There is the, the, the gap between the animal kingdom and humans. So you can only do so much with language and understanding between the two. Um, tell me a little bit about how you got involved with this project and then how you uh, ended up becoming the, the captain of the ship, so to say. Well, um, I've been a, a director for 20 some odd years now doing TV commercials and, uh, and, and, and I've done short films and I've done, you know, never, never a, a documentary short or anything, but, um, you know, when you're interviewing somebody for the United Way or for a children's hospital or whatever, you know, you're pretty much using all those skills anyway. Uh, anyway, so, um, the, the Hallwegs, the executive producers, Barbara and Louis Hallweg, mm -hmm. have been African travelers from the United States for a decade and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, and they met Stanny at a chimpanzee sanctuary in Nagamba near U in Uganda. Mm -hmm. And it's a little island that's, you know, it's, it's, there's no way to get to it other than boat by boat, no bridge, nothing. And uh, 
it's the chimps are basically the island is for the chimps and then the people are fenced off in their area but the island is all chim chimps don't swim right uh at least 99 percent of them don't so uh they're you know they're secure there and and, oh, and so they they were intrigued by Stanley. they stayed in touch with him for 15 years and um He's been moving from place to place, and they were telling me about this really interesting friend of theirs named Stanley Neandwi, who uh, was a genocide survivor and actually spoke to chimps, and they thought that might make an interesting movie, and it's sure. like, okay, uh, you know, but, you know, let's just do it in a week or something, so I said, okay, well, that would be, maybe we could do a sizzle reel to get people interested to do um, you know, maybe raise money to do a long, a long f f format film. Mm -hmm. But um, five days later, we had so much material in the can already that all we were missing was uh, Jane Goodall. And you can't do a chimpanzee movie without having Jane Goodall. And I was like, sure. who are you? you? That's not a legit movie then. Yeah. For, for about chimpanzees or people that work with them. And we happen to be filming Stanny at the Jane Goodall Institute in South Africa. So with the help of a bunch of people um, involved, they, you know, we got together with Jane in, and, you know, I would say Dr. Goodall, but she always insisted on being called Jane. Mm -hmm. um, but she, uh, yeah, they, 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 she travels 300 days a year. And I said, okay, well, wherever, we'll go anywhere. I'll interview her in London airport if I have to or whatever. It was not London airport, it was Ottawa, and it was the hotel, an airport hotel, basically. But, oh, wow. Um, and I she scouted got, it like, online. You got her like as she was on her way to somewhere else to get some interview questions in. She was doing um, a lecture. She does these lectures, and she was doing a trap part of having a traveling. Like she had met with Greta Thunberg mm -hmm. in Montreal the day before, and then was in Ottawa doing a lecture, part of her lecture series, and. Uh, we tried to get Greta also, but I mean her schedule was was crazed and. Sure. and but she would have been really interesting because we are talking about the sixth, you know, sixth great extinction, which we are all in the middle of right now. And it's yeah. a, it's a Whoops. scary thing. It is. But That's anyway, so we met with Jane, we, we saw her lecture and the next day we were given some time with her and she was so generous with it. And, you know, even when we were finished shooting, she sat down and gave everybody chimpanzee hugs and, um, and talk to us and sign Nat Geo magazines for us. And, oh, awesome. you know, it was, it was a, a thrilling, you know, thrilling for me. I mean, you know, that's. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a moment always, that you won't forget anytime soon. And it's, it, it's really a great addition to the film to see you talk with uh, Jane about uh, the chimpanzee population. And you mentioned the, the sixth extinction that we're currently going through. You want to, uh, uh, elaborate a little bit more on that. We've, we spoke with another filmmaker who has their film that focuses on climate change, and this one mm. talks about more of the animal kingdom. What what do you see uh, from from what you've captured so far making this movie in regards to that? Okay, so well, I've learned quite a bit about it. I mean, uh, I was I was already incredibly interested in it after uh, uh, Greta Thunberg's. Uh, United Nations speech and her uh, speech to the UK Parliament, mm -hmm. which, you know, where she breaks down crying in front of all these politicians. It's a really moving moment. Um, but then to realize, you know, we've all loved chimpanzees. I mean, you can't not. I mean, they were they were our first astronauts, which is a horrible thing that we did to them. But I mean, you know, that that was my exposure to see them. And I remember like TV shows of the minute. And, and then you find out those are all baby chimps and their parents were probably murdered and they were ripped from their dead parents arms. And, you know, it just horrible stories there. But the extinction is real. And uh, I mean, there were the uh, last century, there were over a million chimpanzees and at the rate we're going in the next 20 years, there will probably be zero if we don't make serious changes. And I, I can't imagine, a word, you know, the, the children that we're seeing that are in school now or not in school now because of the virus, but that are, they will, they may grow up in a world where there are no chimps 
and their children will never know what a chimpanzee is. Are, are they on the endangered species list at the moment with chimpanzees? Um, I don't, I don't, I think that list is growing. They, yes, I would imagine they are on the endangered species list, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. Um, but we are losing a thousand different species of everything from bacteria to chimpanzees to rhinoceroses to, you know, plants or whatever every single day that's what this extinction level the uh i think the fifth great extinction were actually that was the dinosaurs that wasn't even the first one so you know we are getting you know, there were you know there are no dinosaurs now and there haven't been for 60 million years but i mean well and they're not coming back and, and if the chimps go they're not coming back either. right so very very rarely you find a species that's able to to survive those extinctions i think what the, the crocodile or the alligator might have been around for for a long 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 time but that's one species out of everything that used to exist during the time of the dinosaurs um and sharks sharks sharks, sharks. Sharks have been around for, have been able to survive it. But even now you see overfishing and um, oh, yeah. and, and, and poachers. Um, it, it's really, really terrible to, to see that this is what's been going on. And your film hopefully will bring some awareness towards, uh, well, A, also what happened with the, the genocide um, in between the two, the, the Hutus and the Tutsis. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then, um, uh, yeah. And both sides, both sides, I mean, both sides were wrong. Uh, and, you know, no side was right in that. I mean, it was just, you know, you know, it's, 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 that is purely tribal and, you know, being an outsider, we're just saying, well, that's true. But I mean, we're no different with, you know, world wars and, uh, police actions in Vietnam or whatever. I mean, you know, people are really, you know, not, not cool about things like that. It's, yeah. uh, it's, it's an obvious statement. It is getting harder around the world, I, I understand. And we, we hope and pray for, for better times for humanity and the animal kingdom as well. Um, when audiences watch this film, what do you hope that they would take away from it after they uh, experience Pan Hoot? Well, um, I guess uh, uh, empathy. Empathy for each other and for, and for the animal kingdom, for the animals, you know, for chimpanzees to see what the chimps we go through their specific little stories vignettes of what this chimp has gone through and this chimp has gone through and then you can see them thriving because of uh the jane goodall institute in south africa chimp eating and stanny and and yana svart who is also in the film the the people that work with those chimps um you know you you, you hope there's hope but what we're wanting is people to actually just like hey can you help us out, help them out? Yeah. And they can do that by going to our website, pantootfilm.com and clicking on get involved links. And they're all, you know, we, we don't get any of that. We don't want any money or anything. It's just all for, um, so they're direct. Right? I'm sorry? Charity to, to help the species to, so that they can preserve the chimpanzees and other uh, animals that are in risk of being extinct. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, the Chimp Eden has a uh, has a uh, chimp adoption program. You can adopt any one of the chimps that are in our film, or any other ones that you identify with, and they are easy to identify. I mean, they are ninety eight point seven uh, percent exactly the same DNA as, or there's just like one point three percent difference yeah. between me and a chimp. I mean, you know. We're not that different. We're just a couple of, you know, generations of chromosomes are uh, different than chimpanzees. Personally, I- Yeah, we just went one way and they went the other. I mean, and, yeah. you know, it's, they have exactly the same, uh, they're, they're very similar in a scary way as well. In the bad ways, they're the same as us, as well as in the good ways. Yeah. I hope that um, your film can bring some attention towards this issue and that we start hearing some good news about uh, repopulation of chimpanzees, less poaching and more awareness that the sixth extension is currently going on. Um, in closing, is there anything you'd like to say to the Holly Shorts Film Festival organization for um, including this film uh, for this year's selection? Well, um, everybody involved in Pant Hood, including Stanny, and uh, JGI in South Africa are all, we're all incredibly 
uh, grateful to be included in this festival. It's an important festival uh, for, for filmmakers and films and for, uh, you know, in this case, you had talked about a, a climate movie and this is not a climate movie. This is, you know, but this is still, a, a, you know, there's still some way of becoming active. Yeah, it's, and, a, it's a hot topic issue that needs to be discussed and brought to the forefront. So climate change is another one and so is animal preservation. So uh, that's what the Pan Boot uh, is, is really focusing on. And we hope that more viewers will be able to check it out and then adopt a chimpanzee or donate to help a, uh, um, a preservation fund and then hopefully turn the course of where we're currently going around and save species, which would be a great thing. It would be. And, you know, hopefully the movie doesn't lecture this. It does it, it presents it in an entertaining way. So you feel... You know, so, you know, we got to give you something to enjoy while we're also explaining what's going on. Otherwise, sure. Sure. you know, it, it's yes, not hard. as it is. And we'll, we'll be able to showcase that. You can find it on BitPix at the Holly Shorts Film Festival. And we will show a trailer and, and tag the link and put up some stills while, while we're putting together this video. And um, we hope that we can spread the word about the film. And uh, thank you again for talking with us today, Richard. Thanks, Alex. Take care.